Ahoy friends, welcome to Building the Alpha Dory. I'm Dan and uh, this is our ongoing project building a uh, Chamberlain Alpha Dory from uh, John Gardner's set of plans. So we've got a uh, plank number one strike ready to hang and uh, that's out in the shop so let's get to it. Got a great crop of uh, hibiscus coming in. We'll be feasting on these this evening. Delicious little blooms. Oh yeah, that's going to be a good one. A little lemon juice, olive oil, and some sea salt on it. Yum. Just make sure you get the ants out of them before you start munching. So here's the uh, strike on the floor in here. Ready to go on the boat. Cooper and all that. The other day, so it's uh, dry. I'm not going to get cuprinol all over us putting it up on there. So I like to use uh, these, uh, well, I guess they're tie down straps. Um, just to get the plank uh, up to where it's supposed to be. Um, yeah, you want to use something soft when you're first putting the plank up because one end is going to move around while you're putting the other end up. Now, if I was at a dory shop, uh, a little bit more room at it. with two guys you could have one person line it up and the other one just nail it on and then wrap it around and nail it on but I like to get it up in place pretty close to on the boat before I drive nails just so I know that all the lines are right because while I'm nailing it's really tough for me to line the plank up on the wood. And they uh, have a fairly flat bearing surface. So uh, you know if I got I got some heavier rope too, like some big line, which works fine also. You just don't want to use something thin that's gonna cut into the plank. thing I want to do uh, while I'm getting this up there is uh, get the plank lined up fore and aft where I want it. I'm going to put a couple clamps in the middle. Throw a few kick sticks in there too. This 
So when I'm uh, putting the uh, bow section on here, yeah, it's important that, uh, that I get her where she's going to want to end up, um, height-wise. So what I'm doing is I'm actually checking the, uh, the bevel that we cut in the plank we're putting on and checking how that's lining up with the bevel in the in the previous plank below it and so like I said the previous plank below it it doesn't have a feather edge on this uh, top edge but it's got close to it so in order to get this plank to lay flush with the stem I can't put the bevel edge right on the top edge of the plank I need to set it up about a quarter of an inch above that and like I said there's the there's like a tiny air gap where you know old timey if you were running a thread of cotton along there you know the cotton would take up that gap um, we'll just use a bit of putty in there and it'll do just the same thing okay I'm good back here on the uh, on the uh, scarf joint because I've got some old holes in that scarf joint that I want to be able to put rivets through and I just want to make sure that those holes aren't blocked by the frame. Looks like I'm at a good height along the, uh, along the boat here. It's going to actually come up a tiny bit, not a lot though. Yeah, it's going to do it. Yeah, I'll look with it. Kick stick in there. Yeah, alright, that one's coming up into place. Alright, well we got the drill out. That's ready to go. Go grab the nails. Those are an important part. So we'll be using the bronze ring nails to uh, put these nails in. Try not to step on the, you know what I could do is move it to the other side so it's under the frame. Try not to step on the uh, other plank here that's on the floor. Let's do this. Here goes nothing, right? Nothing, honey. So, uh, like we were saying before, we will want to Mm -hmm. 
these angles, I think I might want to take a little bit more off that uh, stem to get this, this uh, number one plank to lay on there a little bit tighter. The bottom of the stem is the angle's perfect. Looks like the top of the stem could use a little bit of tweaking. So the angle's a little bit uh actually it's looking perfect now. So let's see if I can figure out what's going on. Okay, it's because I was it's because I was pushing in on the outside of the board rather than on the inside of the board which is pretty much where the nails are going to be pushing I'll take a little bit more off See where that's hitting. Right there. So I'm just sort of uh, eyeballing where the plank is touching. That's keeping it, uh, keeping it. That looks great right there. That was enough to do it. All right. Yeah, you don't want to take off too much either. You'll start opening up a gap on the inside. You know, you want a nice tight, tight fit all around. And if anything, you want it tight on the inside, and uh, the next plank coming over, you know, plus any uh, putty that you put in there, will uh, will clean it up on the outside. Okay, so I'll put the uh, clamp back on. Probably won't need the strap. Here's hoping. stem right up along and not seeing a lot of light in there oops Let's 
So the uh, most clamping pressure is needed at the top edge of this plank because there's actual twist this way. So the top is trying to pop back. So that's why I got the uh, clamps up here. Okay, so I just went down a bit too far onto the next strake, and I could see where this strake lifted this strake off of the stem. So you don't want to nail it on in that in that situation because you could split the plank if you drive in a really good if you drive a ring nail into a nice tight hole, it'll just keep pulling. It'll either pull itself right into the plank and damage the plank, or it'll pull the uh, or it'll split the plank. Until we get back to the transom so you know, it's it's within a half an inch of where it's gonna end up so we're we're good there Swap out my uh, my light backing block for my heavy backing block. And what I don't want to do is pop this. Uh, this clamp off before I get that nail in. So the nails are holding her now. I'll put the clamp on down here a little bit to try and cinch this part of the of the planking in a little. Now I got a clamp a nail into the top where the clamp came out of just short of the lap. So that brought, brought that in the rest of the way. And uh, looks like I can take this one in a bit more even with the clamp on there. Alright, yeah, that's coming up nice. 
this. Looks good. All right, so that's the real, oh, what would you call it? Nervous part. All right, so that this nail is going through both planks. It's going through this plank that I'm just nailing on, and it's also going through the lap of the plank below it. surprised how well these things come out. <laughs> I, mean, I guess I've been doing it long enough, but yeah, it's really not that hard to build a door. If you're thinking about doing it, go for it. It's uh, really the big thing is just the time and the sweat that goes into it. And it's definitely worth it once you're out there on the water. Yeah, this is going to be a pretty cool boat. You get a, three or four people in this and put two or three of them on the oars and you can go pretty much anywhere. In most any kind of weather that you'd want to be out in anyway. You know, go right up against the wind and not even notice it. And then these sail beautifully. You may have uh, noticed the intro to... Um, Last video, last couple of videos is a great one. Um, sailing at the small reach regatta. Okay, so I've got about a half an inch to get to the line, the scribe line at this frame. Now I could really wrench on this board and uh, you know tweak it. And if I was beveling the laps. I'd kind of almost have to get to that line because I've got a bevel that I want to meet with the other bevel that I want to you know, be a meet a faying surface with that other bevel. But where I've got a, where I haven't beveled the board that I'm installing and I've beveled the, the board below it, you know, sufficiently to, to take this plank. Um, I can drop it down, you know, that extra quarter inch, and it's not really going to matter as to the uh, as to the way the clamp, as to the way the uh, plank rivets on there. You know, it'll rivet on just fine. All the little bit of extra meat right there, and it's right along the scribe line the rest of the way along. So, so yeah, I'm in pretty good shape. All right, so yeah, next thing is, uh, so not too much of a gap here. All right, if there was, we'd probably put a kick stick in. The gap isn't bad. And so the next thing is, is to, uh, to put a ring nail into this frame here. And this will be the first ring nail that goes into the frames, the frame arms uh, on the boat. Everything else is uh, fastened into the bottom so far. All right, where's that clamp? Yeah, there it is. A little mini clamp. I will try and pooch it up a tiny bit, see how close I can get to the line, the scribe line. And I've got a kick stick in, so, so uh, you 
I'm pretty close to it anyway. Just visible under the uh, edge of the lap. So I'll stop right there. That's close enough. And you can see this gap opened up slightly when I uh, pulled that up. Not a big deal. You know, it's gonna it's gonna close up with the rivets just fine. Yeah, I hate these clamps sticking down, but you know, that's what I got at the moment. Um, well, I don't put my eye out on one of those clamps one day. It's incredible how good the Lord can be. Keeping me safe over the years. Alright. So what I want to do is go about half an inch up. Half an inch up from the bottom edge of the uh, lap. Maybe not even. Put the hole in, and, uh, and I'm going through both planks again. This is through. This is through the um, the plank we're installing, and through the garboard plank. So through the number one on the garboard. All right, and uh, now the idea is I work my way along. As I, as I get towards the middle of the boat, I'm going to start watching where the, uh, where the plank is falling on the transom. I'm going to become more and more uh, cognizant of that. Uh, because as we move the, our way down, we, we minimize the amount that we can adjust the transom the closer we get to the transom. So if we see something not quite lining up, we want to try and take care of that a little bit sooner rather than a little bit later. Okay. So push this in with another kick stick. So the way I use the kick sticks is I'm, I'm not actually kicking them. What I'm doing is I'm uh, placing the end of the stick on the floor and the top of the stick further away so the stick is at an angle. Then when I uh, pressurize them, I'm sliding, them, sliding the head of the stick so it's more over in line with where the foot is on the floor and it just, you know, I'm basically shortening that distance and bringing the board up close to the plank. Are you speaking to an entity? Sure am. Good. Like I was saying, I'm going about a half inch uh, 
half inch up from the from the bottom of the plank through the next through the garboard and into the frame there. So I'm going through a uh, three quarters of an inch of pine. So you can see you need nails this long. Probably going through that much pine until I get into the oak. So you need the length in those uh, ring nails to you know, get a good bite into the into the oak. That's good that you saw that uh, kick stick drop out. That uh, took up that plank tight against the frame. stick in down here. Okay, we're on the, not too far from the line. Okay, so the line's running a little high back here, so I want to, I want to bring this down now before I put another uh, nail in. I'll be right down on the line, which it looks like I am now. I'm just watching that uh, where we're going on the stern there as we, yeah, so I'll bring it down to about there. Good. This is about half an inch up, and then eyeball it, line it up going into the frame. And then these nails are going in at 90 degrees to the face of the plank, more or less. So, no reason to angle them radically like we were going into the bottom because the, you know, the frame will take this nail at a, at a 90 degree to the plank face. So, right angle to the plank face, so it makes things a little easier. Alright, that one, one went in, still on the line. <clears throat> Try this one next. Okay, so now what I want to do is get this uh, stern plank where I want it, which is right about here. So I'll uh, I'll clamp this and then um, clamp it in place and then put that next nail in.
All right, so I'm about as far down on the um, far down on the transom as I can go, and still close this plank up tight to the transom. So that looks good. mud daubers bringing a big thing of mud in. They kind of make a mess. Alright. Okay, so this looks good. Take a clamp from a plank that I nailed and put it on down here. and then go a half inch above the a little bit less than a half inch above the uh, edge of the plank you're putting on because you know that you've got inch and an eighth of overlap so if you're going almost to a half inch you're on the lower half of that plank nail and then put the backing block on it. So that's as far down as I can take that plank and still have it rest flush to the transom. So that's where we'll that's where we'll go. Nail it in and we'll have this uh, we'll have this plank hung and all we'll have to do is rivet it up, rivet it up. see I've got this plank pulling the uh, this clamp pulling the plank down that way
So I'm putting the first nail in right on the edge of the uh, of the bevel, the gain. These nails need to go in parallel to the uh, transom board. They can't go in at 90 degrees to the plank face like all the others can. nail set to put some of these in too so that I can really get them in nice and tight. Once I've got the one nail in, then
inside or the outside of the pie. And, uh, yeah, looking good. All right, so we ran a little long this video, but uh, we got a lot done, so it's a good thing. Anyway, uh, thanks for stopping by, and we'll see you next video. Bye.